All right, um, to the rest of you, thank you as well for coming. I want to talk to you today, um, give some brief remarks, uh, first about the prosecutor's office and uh, leadership. Now, um, you probably have seen and heard I've been serving in the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office since May of, of 2011. Whew. During that time, I have learned so very much. And I have served longer than any other Jackson County prosecutor in modern history. And longer than any other, um, I think most any other state elected. But uh, very soon after taking office in 2011, I found myself um, in a tough spot. I just walked through the door, just got this great job, and um, I ran into a Catholic bishop in a local diocese um, that I believed needed to be charged for failing to report suspected child abuse. Sometimes the very worst of a crime. Putting kids in harm's way to protect uh, those who have status. Now, I was told then that charging the diocese or the bishop either would destroy my career. I was told that I would be crushed politically. And I believed those warnings, to be blunt, because at the time, these charges were unprecedented. And to you, to you, back in 2011, I was untested. Now, by the way, nobody was clamoring for me to seek those indictments. Instead, that was pressure I put on myself. I knew how to put a case together, um, even though I was brand new in the top role. But I also wholeheartedly believed that I would be defeated in the next election for taking that action and seeking those indictments. Now, that would have left me just with a little over a year left in a job now. Now keep in mind, um, I had spent the previous 15 years honing my experience as an assistant prosecutor in every part of the office. I tried the toughest cases we had. I learned the ropes of politics by running for and serving in uh, the state house. I may be blunt again. I really wanted to keep the job longer than that. I didn't want to lose the job, you know, after one year, after all that. It was very tempting to listen to those threats. So I made a decision. And that decision would stick with me as I stand here before you today. And that was, no matter the political fallout, I was going to run the kind of office I believed necessary. I was not going to allow political favor, or political threats, or even my own ambitions to run my decision making. I have stood by that principle. And I have multiple examples of career ending cases. And here I am. Now, as for the bishop's case, um, I have absolutely no regrets. Now, that's not because um, it worked out. He was convicted and I was reelected. That was nice for me. But because I was willing to pay the price to hold the system accountable and to protect kids at the same time. That's what it was worth to me. That became my baseline. What I know is this, victims deserve justice, no matter who they are, even when justice is going to shake things up. To be a leader means doing what's right, even when faced with death threats, intense political pressure, harsh and relenting critique. Y'all have a lot of critique. And for some of you, from some of you, even questioning my personhood. Shame on you for that. Not you. Those, those others out there um, that usually sign your name anonymous. Now, I have withstood all of that for the privilege of leadership. And I have no regrets. And I also have no grievance. But today I'm announcing 
that I will not seek another term as Jackson County Prosecutor. Now, sorry, to, that makes me a little um, emotional, tearful. I did not come to that decision lightly, and my decision has nothing to do with my passion for justice or my love of this community. I was confident this would be my last term after being re-elected in 2020. But out of respect for this office that I serve and for this community, I wanted to give that a little more time before I fully decided. And the timing of this announcement today has been in the works for many months so that I could devote my remaining time in office responsibly while encouraging another leader to step up into this incredibly difficult and rewarding role. I am certain of this. I am certain that I leave this office stronger than when I first found it. And I will be forever grateful, forever grateful to the people of Jackson County for this experience of a lifetime. Now, while the public might see a somewhat glamorous side of elected re leadership, these cameras, crowds, even victory parties on election nights, there's another side that is not often seen. The time away from family, the loss of anonymity, the time spent pondering death threats, the mental gymnastics involved in making difficult decisions, which in this job, they come almost daily, by the way. And the hardest of all, the hardest of all is carrying the toll of violence. It does weight my heart, as it should. I cherish this community and this office that I have the privilege of representing with everything that I've had. My love for both has only grown. It has not diminished over time. Now, there have been times where my heart was broken, my spirits crushed, but so many, many more times where my heart was lifted simply by fighting the fight for justice. What a great call I've had. Now, I've been long thinking about the most graceful way to lead this office, but also the most graceful way to exit. Jackson County deserves someone who's ready to endure each heartbreak and embrace each fight. I acknowledge, though, how taxing this position is. I have been on call 24 hours a day seven days a week, 365 days a year, since May of 2011. Now in May of 2011, I bound it into this position. And I honestly, um, I felt like I had endless energy. Um, I should say this with my family in the back, but Saturdays would roll around and I would kind of be disappointed <laughs> that it was Saturday and no one was gonna be in the office the next day. That's um, how much I loved the role. I still do, I still do. But my farm girl work ethic only allows performance of this job at 110%. And Jackson County deserves that pace and they need it. But my family deserves my attention too and more than I've been used to giving to them. And I'm ready for a different pace. I want to say um, that I have stood on the shoulders of those who have come before me in this role. It's important for me to acknowledge some of them. Albert Reeder, Claire McCaskill, Bob Baird. Um, I acknowledge them for their leadership, the lessons I learned from them. And I wish to leave this office in the hands of a new steward. A new steward who I pray will love and cherish this office as much as they did and as much as I do. I want to publicly acknowledge uh, my staff, 
uh, Dion Sankar, thank you, brother, for being such a graceful warrior. I wouldn't want to do this job without him. And Mike, who's been with me um, since I first came in in 2011, thank you for fighting with me so very often. You made me better for those fights. To Teresa, Jennifer, Gina, so many others. Tony, Keith, Claire, Stephen. It's your shoulders that I stand on. And I thank you, genuinely thank you, for allowing me to serve alongside you. Now, we take some shots, this office. We take some shots. I know many of those are unfair. It goes along with the territory. But I know that these public servants are the best in the business. I know that because my phone rings regularly from U.S. attorney's offices. The top law firms in town, the panel that picks judges, y'all call me all the time <laughs> for my people. And you call me because you know what I know. They are the best in the business. They don't get credit for that, but their skills have to be honed. To work here, to succeed here, you gotta be tough. And you gotta be better, frankly. You just gotta be better. And they are. That's just not the lawyers, by the way. That credit goes to the victim advocates, God, Marilyn, and Doris. Investigators, Keith, Tony, Tim, Joe, the legal assistants in this office, all of them, Breezy, Ashley, the analyst, you're new to us, but my God, we need you. And we're grateful that you're here. And of course, the attorneys. They're all very dauntless and dedicated public servants. So thank you for giving me a moment to allow me to praise them for being such great, great public servants who show up every day without any accolades and certainly um, without enough of what we can give them to do this job. I trust them to embrace the next leader of this office uh, with the same kind of unwavering commitment to an incredibly difficult and often thankless job. I believe they will do that. Let me sum up my faith in these public servants in this way. If I were a crime victim, if I were a crime victim, I'd want this Jackson County team for me, for my family to go fight for justice in those courtrooms, the toughest, the toughest. I'd want them. Now, to be clear, I am not seeking another elected office. Let me be crystal clear about another thing. Protecting the innocent, pursuing justice for victims, prosecuting the guilty, well, it ain't for the faint of heart. But my God, it is worth it. So worth it. Now, I'm not done yet. I will continue to fight hard for this community for the next 17 months. And I will fight for this office every day of that time. Just today, in this room, we launched our wellness initiative for staff, and that's to ensure that they are ready for the fights ahead. It is my responsibility to take care of them outside of the courtroom, too, so they're able to withstand those inevitable battles and this relentless toll of violence. Now, even after I leave this job behind in January of 2025, I'll never forget the lessons that I've learned here. The cases of people that I met, victims, a woman named Roberta, 
a very captivating woman named Miss Willie, Demaya White, which I carry her flyer and have for over a decade. It's shown somewhere <laughs> as a reminder of why I do this job. Kevin Strickland, because justice is shown in many different ways. Deja Bowski, Brianna Hill, Daisy Coleman, Cameron Lamb. They're just a few of the names that made me rethink what leadership truly is and what kind of leadership is required. Now, I mentioned my farm girl mentality earlier. And farmers know that when you properly tend to the soil, you, would, you can expect to grow a strong crop. In that vein, I promise you this, I'll continue to give 110%. Continuing to take care of the soil of this place until the day I walk out of the office for the last time. That is what the people of Jackson County deserve. But know this, when grace is needed, I'll show grace. But when a fight is needed, but when a fight is needed, then I'll fight with all I got. All right.